total generation cost of supplying that demand based on all the information they have on yesterday at 4 p.m., right? So that decision is actually basically deciding which unit to be turned on and which unit to be turned off and how much should be turned on for each hour. The time resolution is hourly, right? The time resolution is hourly. Why do they do that so early? Why don't they just do it, you know, 10 minutes ahead? Why should they make a decision at 4 p.m. yesterday about the scheduling of today? Sounds like a too early of a decision, huh? Because the power plant has to come online and they have to buy right. the power. Because uh, power plant, uh, it takes some time for them to come up online or come down uh, offline. Uh, takes, a, again, a coal power plant two to four hours to just go from zero to its desired level, right? If you are relying everything on the last resort 10 minutes ahead, you probably will not have that flexibility, right? So you want to somehow, I mean, it's a natural process, right? Engineers always do that, you know? You do the same thing, right? You have a rough estimate of your, you know, expenditure for next year, uh, and then you have to kind of fine tune that, right? So, so this is happening at 4 p.m. yesterday, and then at uh, at 5:50, at 5:50, uh, there is another decision because, you know, at 4 p.m. yesterday, if they want to say how much you are going to consume now, do you think it's going to be quite accurate? <coughs> Maybe not, right? And then at 4 p.m. yesterday, if they want to say how much wind is blowing now, you think it's, more, it's pretty accurate? It's going to be even worse than the load, right? If you just take completely off the chart, right? Um, so you have to somehow you know, fine tune that because now you have new information, right? At, uh, at, uh, at now, at, uh, at 5.50, when you're trying to make a decision for 6 p.m., you have a much better uh, information about what's available for demand and what's available for wind, right? And you make a fine tune, uh, sort of a uh, rebalancing of supply and demand. Okay. Now, yes. Um, does this mean that a lot of the time when they um, forecast the demand, they're going to realize that they have to obviously go above the demand because if they go short, then people are going to lose power. So then they're going to lose that. Why go that above is better. Go above, you have to shut down the power plant. Sometimes you cannot shut down them. Right. So but if you're not supplying home. enough demand to the customer, then right. like what they're demanding, then they wouldn't get power, I guess? But even, but the, what? That's correct. You're going to have some partial lack of supply. But actually, the other side also, that if you have more supply than demand, your frequency is going to shoot up. You're also going to have some problems. Okay. So that's the. So well, you want to make the, it as close as you possibly can. That's the challenging part of the power engineer. You know, people have spent a hundred years to working on these problems. Right. So, so yes, yes. Um, okay. How big of a problem is this? I mean, what, what kind of, how accurate are they? Uh, how accurate do they estimate this? Or yes, and, like, I'm going to show you that. And such? Yes, I'm going to show you here. So about forecast of load, about forecast, and now here comes another question because people may say. Okay, what's the big deal? You know, wind is just another kind of uncertainty, right? We deal with load uncertainty all the time. Right? What's the big deal? Well, the is a big deal. The big deal is that when you're trying to forecast how the demand look like, actually, I suggest you go back today and log on to www.ercot.com. Uh, on their first front page, there is a forecast of Texas uh, demand every day. And then you can look at actual demand versus forecast demand. Right? Uh, it just happened to be the case, actually, you know, people spend 40 years researching on forecast and demand. The result is that these kind of things actually tend to be quite, quite good, you know? Because human beings have this sort of cyclic way of using electricity, right? And uh, you know that, you know, at, uh, at noon, people are out for work, and then at midnight, people are sleeping. So there is this very nice cyclic behavior of demand. So 
So the bottom line is, at 4 p.m. yesterday, that forecast of demand, you know, after so many years of research, is actually now pretty good. Pretty good. You are a little bit off, but not much. Not much. Now, if you go back to the other question, now even if you want to quantify that, how good is the good? I'm saying about 95% of accuracy. 90 to 95% of accuracy. Okay? A day ahead. 4 p.m. yesterday, we can know about 90 to 95% of accuracy how the demand will look like for the day. Okay? On average. Now, if you talk to IBM and you ask them, <coughs> how good is, is your wind forecast for day ahead? Because now you have this fastest computer in the world. You have the supercomputer. You're doing a very, very sophisticated weather-based uh, simulation, right? You try to forecast how is the wind going to blow at 4 p.m. today uh, uh, when, you were, you, when you were in yesterday. The result is, sorry, it's still pretty bad. And it's, you know, it's understandable because weather forecast is actually a very, uh, it's a very old subject of research. I mean, even today, you know, if you read the weather, you know, weather forecast, if you want to be precisely saying how much the wind is blowing at this location at, you know, 5:10 tomorrow, chances are that you are going to be pretty off. Right? You're going to be pretty off. So while it still remains an active area of research, uh, I think uh, the fact that we have to use now is that we tend to have much better near-term forecast of wind compared with longer-term forecast of wind. Uh, as if you were to compare the case of load, the day ahead forecast of demand or load is already a pretty good, already pretty good, okay? So then what's the deal? What's the big deal? Well, the big deal is that if you think about Everything was pretty much kind of predetermined at that UC unit commitment decision at 4 p.m. yesterday using very, very inaccurate forecast, very, very inaccurate forecast. Chances are that you may have to actually jerking some last resort of very fast responsive unit a lot. Right? Because think about this is the expected wind, right? Expected wind. Well, if this one becomes uh, very volatile, and you are always kind of relying on the last resort, the last 10 minutes, to make the dispatch decision, what can you do? You cannot turn on or off a coal power plant in the very last 10 minutes, right? What can you do? Well, you rely on this natural gas units, right? You rely on this... Uh, this category of fast responsive units, right? This fast responsive unit is going to be constantly ramping up and down, jerking up and down, to compensate the opposite of ramping down and up of these wind resources. And as a consequence of that, the fuel economy or the emission of those fossil fuel based fast responsive units is going to be pretty high, right? So that's no good, that's no good. So these are some uh, summary of, of what are the uh, potential problems with conventional ED. You have significant need for fast and expensive units. You are underutilizing, underutilizing those slower and perhaps cheaper and perhaps uh, pretty good resources, right? Uh, and pollution, uh, are caused by this volatile ramping of this fast responsive unit. And consequently, how is that related with you and me? Well, we have to pay the bill, the electricity, right? Uh, somebody has to pay the bill, so your bill and my bill becomes a little bit high. Right? And there is really no incentive, there's no, when you think about it in a marketplace, there is no incentive to reduce this ramping rate related costs. Because everything is basically getting uh, socialized. Uh, you and me, you know, at the end of the month, if you read your electricity bill, uh, you know, there is something that is uh, corresponding to the so-called ancillary services cost. And that ancillary service cost covers this renting rate related cost. So uh, 
one needs to think more about, and here comes the smart part, right? Uh, okay, you are facing with this situation, what can you do better? You know, we are engineers, we're trying to solve problems, right? Uh, what can you do? Well, I think, no matter who does it, uh, there is some potential benchmark. Uh, number one is that you have to be able to optimize under a huge amount of uncertainties. Uh, you also have to be able to re uh, utilize uh, near term a better forecast, right? Because if you again talk to IBM, you say, okay, I know you're pretty bad at forecasting the wind day, but how good are you at forecasting the wind 10 minutes ahead? Namely, if I look at now, it's you know, maybe uh, 6 p.m., I can do a pretty good job now to forecast how much the wind will blow at 610. And that accuracy can be very high. As high as 95 or even higher percentage. Why? Because weather doesn't change. Exactly. Quickly? Wind has certain inertia, right? They don't stop, you know, for no reason. They, there is certain, you know, gradual Time period, right? For the case of solar, the same thing. Well, solar is even faster. Solar is changing even faster. The cloud goes, the cloud goes. But again, with the same philosophy, the near term forecast of solar is way better. You know, if you want to say tomorrow how much the solar is produced, good luck. You know, uh, you don't know much. So, uh, so you have to be somehow, you know, actively utilizing this near term forecast. And hopefully it should be something manageable computationally because we are talking about making a decision every five or 10 minutes, right? And we are not talking about a small system. We're talking about for the entire Texas or for the Western, Western US, right? Uh, and hopefully, you know, if we can somehow design some market mechanism that we can align these uh, technical constraints uh, well with some market signals then one day we can coordinate this operational and maintenance cost at, at value, right? At value. So there are a lot of work uh, related. Uh, due to the time constraint, I'm going to just briefly introduce them. Uh, if you are ever interested in wind forecast, you can go and read this paper. Uh, it's a 270 page wind forecast paper by the uh, Argonne National Labs. And there is some discussion about doing a better dispatch, uh, starting you know, way back from 1980s. We are always kind of reinventing the, the wheel. So, uh, but back then the idea was that uh, the idea was you know you can use this kind of a look ahead type scheme, uh, but the saving is moderate because there is not much weight. Uh, recently we did some paper and we found that actually the saving can be much higher when you have very intermittent resources. Uh, also, you have some ideas of maybe you can couple the load behavior with the wind behavior. So if I can somehow incentivize you to say, go and wash your clothes when the wind blows, right? Uh, and I give you some money for doing that. Maybe you can do that, right? Because there is some kind of customer uh, demand that is deferred, right? You don't have to use it right now, as long as you're done today. Or like charging the vehicle, right? you don't have to charge it now, but as long as you have enough uh, uh, battery storage for driving to work tomorrow morning, you're okay. Right? So, so you know this, the general idea of deferral, right? and also maybe use the real-time price, right? If you if you and me are paying just like you're paying in the in the in the, in the gas station every day and every hour, you go back to your house, there's a different price of electricity. Guess how much behavior you have to change, right? If the price happens to be very, very high, maybe you will uh, turn off your AC for a moment, a, bit, a brief moment, uh, right? And uh, actually, industry are now actively thinking about changing the way they do the scheduling uh, from a static version to a more dynamic look-ahead version. So the idea we are proposing is pretty straightforward. 